what's funny is that like through a lot of my work with you and all of my goals for 2018, I was able to really make headway on getting ahead of that work-life balance and kind of creating sacred spaces for myself, not only to do uh, work on the, on my business, but also to be here and be fully present. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to the None Size Fits All podcast, season two. Uh, my name is John Bowler, co-founder of Great Consulting. Uh, super excited today. I uh, have two guests on. I have Kelly and Ryan Bibza. Kelly is the founder of Dress Well, Be Well, uh, fashion and wellness blog. And Ryan is the co-founder of Bonner and Bibza Realty, and they're based in Grove City, PA. So welcome to the podcast, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. It's great to be here, guys. I'm really excited. So we're in Seattle. You're in you're in PA. I, I haven't been to Pennsylvania in a long time. Tell us a little bit about Grove City. Where is it? Like, is it in Pittsburgh? Tell us. Tell me about Grove City. What do you mean by where is it? Like, it's not like on your radar already. Like, I can't believe it. It's got fifteen thousand people there. You act like you know that's like a speck on the map, man. Is it a destination? Is it a destination for, for, for tourists? No. You know, yeah. <laughs> Seven people frequent there. It's about an hour north of Pittsburgh. We actually don't live in Grove City anymore. We both grew up there. And then um, we just moved down towards Pittsburgh about two years ago. But they started the company there. Yes. And then expanded down towards Pittsburgh. Okay, so, so town, town of 15,000. Um, did you know each other growing up? Uh, tell, I guess, when did you meet? Kelly's brother, Ryan, he also, he's the other uh, co-founder of Bonner and Bibs of Realty. He and I started the brokerage together and Ryan and I were seniors when Kelly was a freshman. And I remember Kelly like in the cafeteria, just totally amazing and not at all interested in talking to me. <laughs> and so that happened. I ended up selling uh, Cutco knives to her mom and her dad was my baseball coach. I was doing anything I could to be around this girl. She had no Not interest true. in talking <laughs> to me at all. To be fair though, I was completely not at all bringing it. All right, so, 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 so Ryan, that's your side of it. Kelly, what, what's your take? I knew who he was and I thought he was like, a good looking guy, but I didn't like ever talk to him. I mean, I thought he was kind of cute. I wouldn't. Wow, like, she's he, backpedaling off a of good looking guy. He was kind of cute, kind of like a little quirky, <laughs> kind of like, you know, doing his own thing, wearing his like, you know, Salvation Army t shirts and, you know, just one of those kids. And so, so it went from you were cute to kind of cute to quirky. To one of those kids. Yeah, yeah it started a good looking and it went way downhill from there. No, but I love the Salvation t-shirt kids. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, they're cool kids. I had a pink t-shirt that was like sprayed on. It was that tight. It was really, really uncomfortable to wear. And as a joke, I would wear it. And it had this like bunny rabbit on it. And it said underneath it, it said, I've got a soft touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it it was a statement piece. This is this is yeah. a story of love. So <laughs> this this yeah. is an incredible story of love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when did you actually like? When did you talk for the first time? Was it in high school or was it after that? Uh, I'm sure maybe we spoke. Like I don't know though. Yeah, I don't. She didn't speak really to me at all in high he school. He said he said hi to me at the water fountain and I didn't notice it. It totally <laughs> happened. Yeah, it totally happened. Did you actually, is it confirmed? Like when did you finally actually meet and it's not in Ryan's head at the water, water cooler? We started to um, chat on Facebook. I was, um, I was living in Chicago. Yeah, we had a mutual friend and she had like made this post about Dawson's Creek and I made a joke because she like seriously watches Dawson's Creek on VHS still. 
she recorded them like way back in the what was the 90s or 2000s and she still watches them on VHS. So I was making fun of her on her Facebook wall and then this kid chimed in and then like we kind of had this like back and forth really funny like banter going on and I was like he's pretty funny I like this. I had never then, even seen Dawson's Creek. I just used it as an opportunity <laughs> to like chime in. I, I feel like the, the, the guy in the high school with the bunny shirt is like, here's my here's my window. The girl that I've always been dreaming of likes Dawson's Creek. And he researched it. Is that like is that what happened, Ryan? Yeah, I was just Googling like what is this show? How can I sound intelligent about it? And no. <laughs> I was uh, I was in Chicago as a multi unit manager for Caribou Coffee and I was in a full time band as well. We did a lot of music and then I left Chicago and moved back to PA and was you know, hanging out with Kel and then all of a sudden, you know, I think we were talking about like, you know, maybe we'd hang out together for a little bit and then we'd kind of get out of town and, and go explore the rest of the world and not, not stay in PA necessarily like forever. And then, you know, here we are. So we're, you know, we're just really methodically planning it out. <laughs> So, so, now, so now you're back in this town. So fast forward, <laughs> you know, we're yeah. we're about an hour south of where we were yeah. then. So we've made it pretty far. <laughs> you're definitely you're definitely going really far away. So if you were gonna move, yeah. if you're gonna move somewhere, or or if you were gonna have a second home, where would that be and, and, and why? Well, we just went to Hawaii um, in January. And it was like the most amazing kind of tranquil, peaceful, beautiful place that we've ever been to. And uh, I think I could see a second home there. Yeah. She'd take that. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely live in Kauai. I've been to Maui. Maui is fantastic. So I, uh, uh, Hawaii is. Yeah. So. When I'm on Instagram or I'm on uh, Dress Well, Be Well, like I noticed there are two things really stand out. It's like the, the, the fashion and then there's a lot of stuff towards kind of like healthy eating and whatnot. I, what inspired you to start the blog? How long did you, how long ago did you start it? Um, and how has it been thus far? Okay. So I started it just a little over two months ago. So it's pretty fresh. Um, I started it because I've had a really long journey mm -hmm. with chronic illness. Um, it started really like, I started having symptoms when I was like 12 years old and I just kind of had like weird things happening to me over the years. And then, um, as I got older, things just got a lot worse. And then when I was 26, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. I was like attacking my liver and I just like went totally drawn just one day at work. So it was like a panic, like what's going on? Found out I had the autoimmune disease. It took about six years where my liver enzymes were just like out of control. I was very, very sick and was following the doctor's protocols and everything and I wasn't getting any better. And they said, well, we're gonna have to put you on the liver transplant list. And that's kind of when it really like hit me like, I've got to figure something else out because living with a transplant is really difficult. Um, you know, sometimes your body rejects it or, and then you just have to like manage it for the whole rest of your life. And I was really young, so I didn't want to do that. So I started researching and I found um, an all natural protocol and diet for autoimmune disease, mine in particular. And within six months, I was in remission. I just taking supplements and changing my diet. And so that really like sparked something in me to like figure out other ways like to heal myself just naturally without all these drugs that were causing all kinds of side effects for me that were just making me worse essentially. It didn't even help me, it just made me worse. Then I found out that I had chronic Lyme disease the whole time that was what caused the autoimmune disease. So then I been, went on this like chronic Lyme journey, excuse me, and um, that's been extremely difficult because once you have Lyme and it's chronic, it is so hard to kill. Um, we've been really fortunate with, you know, some 
treatments that I've had that have been successful, but they're not well known. And again, it's like all natural stuff. So I'm doing a lot better now, but I've learned so much, you know, over the years and I really wanted to share it with other people because I know so many other people, especially women that struggle with chronic illness and they're not getting the right kind of treatment that they need and doctors misunderstand it. They get misinformed, they get misdiagnosed. And so I wanted to be a voice for them to let them know that they can take charge of their own health and that they can change things for themselves and do it in a natural, holistic way. Um, so I really want to share my story and share, you know, all these things that I've learned along the way. And also something that was major for me along the way has been fashion. It's just something that's lifted my spirits and like helped me to um, cope with all of it. And um, it's just something that's brought me some joy dur during like really dark and difficult times. Um, so it's just way to express myself and be creative and hopefully inspire other women to do the same. It, I mean, it, it's, it's super, it's super inspiring and um, I'm glad that it's, it's got better. Like what, I guess, what's the feedback been thus far, like sharing your story and showing that vulnerability, but like, what have you heard from others? Oh, great. It's been great. Um, I love to hear from other people who are going through the same thing. You know, a big part of my success has been through learning from others who have shared their stories and helped me along my journey too. So, um, you know, it's great. Like I've heard from all kinds of Lyme people, all kinds of autoimmune people saying like, you know, thank you for sharing this diet. Like, you know, asking me questions about how can you stick to it and, um, you know, just have different kinds of treatments for Lyme and I'm totally open to helping anybody, you know, in the best way that I can. Um, and, and people actually have been really responsive to the posts where I open up more, the ones where I just do like, Hey, this is my outfit. Have a great Saturday. You know, those posts don't get as many likes as, when I like share something more vulnerable or share something about my story or something helpful, those tend to get more engagement and reaction from, you know, the wellness community and women in general. It's super, it's super powerful. I mean, I, you know, I asked uh, you two on and obviously I talked to Ryan quite, quite a bit and I th I'd say the thing that stood out most and even in like the, the email that we exchanged last night is, there's like this glowing nature of the two of you in your relationship. Um, even to have this discussion and like, you know, obviously we had banter for like five minutes where we were just kind of screwing around to, to, to this like very serious <clears throat> conversation. So like, I, I believe in, in true love and falling in love. And I think that you two embody that. And so like, thank you for, for, wow. um, for, for living. Thank you. But Ryan, like yeah. from your end, you know, like seeing this and, and, you know, we kind of we have that playful like back and forth. There's this side of of seriousness, and then we have the joking side. Like, how has it been for you as a you know a small business owner, both running your business as well as supporting you know Kelly through this new endeavor? I feel pretty fortunate that I've been able to keep a pretty good balance of uh, of humor and perspective, and I think that everything that we've been through has really kind of helped chisel that and really refine it and be, and that helps me in my, in my actual day-to-day -day business. And it also helps me to be a great, you know, a source of support for Kelly because, uh, you know, whenever you go through stuff that's really, really dicey, you know, it, it forces you to just really see things clearly as what's, what's really important. Like you guys are fascinating because, you know, you're both building businesses simultaneously. Like, you, you, like when I think about couples, like that is a that's a power couple in its in its entire sense that you're both trying and dreaming big and going after something much larger. I guess how is that? You come home and you're both exhausted. Like, how do you how do you cope with that? We try to um, kind of like end our day at some point though, and then we'll have dinner, even if it's pretty late 
and we'll just chill on the couch for at least like an hour and watch a show together. You know, we try to shut down and it's not always successful, but we at least really make an effort to do that. What's funny is that like through a lot of my work with you and all of my goals for 2018, I was able to really make headway on getting ahead of that work-life balance and kind of creating sacred spaces for myself, not only to do uh, work on the, on my business, but also to be here and be fully present. It was really challenging for years to, to be in the moment. I felt like every single vacation we had was completely torpedoed by my work. Every movie we went to in the theater was completely interrupted by my phone. It was never ending. And then finally this year, really through a lot of that hard work, I started to finally like feel like I'm doing it. And and Kel was like, that's, you know, it's true. Yeah. You are. And then the second I arrived at that, she starts her own freaking business. <laughs> I had enough. I was like, okay. Yeah. She's like, if this is what life is going to be like, he's going to be here all the time. I got to find something to do. Kelly, did it inspire you to see, because you have like, when we think about this stuff, a lot of the stuff that we do today doesn't necessarily, you don't get to see the benefits until like far down the road. Like, did it inspire you? Or I, I guess, like, what was your take as Ryan was going through this kind of next stage where he's thinking about massive growth and, and scaling so you guys can go get that house in, in Hawaii? Oh, yeah. He's a major inspiration to me. I mean, as a person and as a business owner, I mean, I, he just completely took off. Like, you know, we started back in Grove City and... He, we had like a tiny apartment and like we shared this room that was like the closet slash makeup room slash Ryan's office. <laughs> like, and that's where it all started. And then he's grown this like really amazing, successful business. And I mean, I've just watched him work his butt off, you know, for years, but he does it in a way where it's like, he's so, helpful and he's so patient and he cares about people and so it's really inspiring to just see him you know in that light where he's just so amazing <laughs> i'm really glad this is being recorded <laughs> well i mean it's it's more than just like making money he's also you know impacting people's lives in a positive way so that's very inspiring to me yeah i i see it in the interactions that we have and I, I feel as though like there's this pursuit that a lot of people find and take and you're, you're pursuing something much bigger. And it's not necessarily, it's not a fiscal thing. It is a purpose driven mentality. And I think that that's like yeah. what you two are embodying. How is it? I mean, when we think about building, we think about preparation and we think about the things that I prepare today will allow me to get further ahead. How are you guys taking this concept of preparation and applying it to your two businesses simultaneously because it's hard. It's hard work to create anything. It's hard to scale. How do you go about preparing both on the blog side and the real estate side? You know, in our conversations about when she's talking about like everything she's trying to achieve and things that, you know, never had enough time and whatever she's going through, I'll usually, I'll channel you. He does. Yeah. You know what John Bowler would yeah. say. I said, well, you know what Bowler would say. <laughs> and... I would tell her, you know, what I think you would say. And actually, it's actually worked for like tons of things that have nothing to do with business. Like I just, I use it to settle every potential disagreement we have. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you know what? That's not how Bowler would load the dishwasher, <laughs> you know? And it wins. It really does. It, it beats everything. No, but it's actually been <laughs> super helpful because I, I, I mean, I... You and the way your brain works, I really, really appreciate it. And it's, it's like there's a simpatico crossover to mine, but there's also a very different bend that I really like. And it, it spurs me to focus on things that, you know, maybe aren't why I got into the business, but they're how the business is going to really go to those next levels and things that, you know, I don't think. Maybe because they weren't my natural language, I didn't always understand how to speak it. But really tooling in with you has is, is helped. Like if she ever asks, like, well, what, you know, what, what should I do? I, I do have some better, you know, preparation advice for that. And also starting, you know, BBR and the way that that took off really without any preparation, 
I'd been in real estate for 10 months and I, I, you know, done some deals and it was like, Oh, time to start your own company. Wait, what? Like not at all ready. And you know, both Ryan Bonner and I still had a lot to learn. We were wanting to, to learn, but it was, it was a lot really quickly. And so then now essentially starting this kind of mini company within the company with the Ryan Bibbs group with the team, I'm able to now lay the groundwork and, and kind of do that prep. And so, I mean, a lot of it for me starts with like getting up really, really early and starting all that work, like before all my days get ahead of me and, you know, carving out that time for, for you know, thinking and planning and looking at the data. And, you know, Kel's actually now in the, more of the position that I was whenever we started BBR because there was no roadmap for her when she started her business. There was no, you know, no one telling her this is what you do. So she's kind of figuring it all out as she goes. And I'm sure if she, if someone walked in the door and asked her, how should I start a business just like yours? She could probably give some helpful insights as to what to, what to do, what not to do. And, you know, she probably learned a lot just in the first two months. This, I think this is good and timely. Like it's the end of 2018 and people are talking about business plans. And I was always like, when I was at Zillow, I was raised to talk about this North Star and the North Star is like really far out in the distance, but the role of the leader is to basically navigate each leg of your journey. If you're hiking a mountain, that's like maybe 10 days. You have to think about things like food and where you're sleeping and what the best route is, because if you don't do that, it's irresponsible and, and bad things could happen. So like there's that when you're building a business, writing the clear roadmap, and then there's it when you're in the middle of a business that's already in flight. And really the new year is when people seem to always kind of gravitate towards what's well, a little more structure. How, how, are, how do you guys plan to approach that? For me, it's, it's, it is all about documentation and just putting everything that's in my head down into structural repeatable steps that don't just exist in my world, but they're, there's something that I can, I can see. And sometimes just putting it down actually gives it new life that I didn't even realize fully when I was just thinking about it. So it's pretty critical for me to, to put pen to paper, although not actual pen to paper because I hate my handwriting. Cal, what about you? Like, so you, two months in, you kind of, I, I know that phase you're like in go, go, go mode. And it's really hard to get ahead because you're always like trying to keep up pace. What are the plans for 2019? You take a step back and give up a little bit of your speed and, and velocity in order to get ahead or, or what's the plan? Well, what I'm trying to do right now is see what's coming up like month by month. And like, was it holidays or, you know, like what kind of sales are going on? What's in season, like foods and different things like that. And just like, I have this huge calendar on my desk and I like write down, you know, when I'm going to do the photo shoots for this upcoming holiday. That's like, you know, two weeks from after that time. So I'm like trying to get ahead of everything so that kind of thing i'm just trying to plan it out ahead of time ryan like you sell 10 to 15 homes a month yourself and so i always just kind of say 13 that's the number always in my head uh and kelly like the first time i met you i asked you just like do you who writes all of your stuff and who does all of your posts and it was it was just all you so how do you guys how do you do this like how, i mean between the two of you you're doing numbers in terms of reach and scale and productivity that is unheard of in my mind in both of those fields. Like we're, we produce content and we don't produce as much as you because it's really hard. And Ryan, like you sell a crap ton of homes. I don't know how you actually do it. So how, how does that, how do you, you don't have to tell your secret sauce, but how do you kind of blend work-life balance and support when you two are both just sprinting ahead? Yeah, well, so, I mean, the plan, obviously, and I mean, it's, I think it's good to know that you, in that first conversation that we had, when we had, you know, Kate and you and me chatting on the phone, and, you know, I was on the fence, like, should I, should I build the team? Should I just do what I'm doing? And, you know, it was kind of that, that crux moment where I knew, you know, the balance isn't there. 
And so to answer your question, it, it, it doesn't really exist on a, on a really enjoyable basis with that much work. It's too, too all consuming to really have a great balance there. So that was kind of, you know, one of the major tipping points was if I'm ever going to get that balance, I have to build infrastructure. I have to hire and, and develop these, you know, roles and, and really work this to a point where everyone loves what they do. I love what I do, and it's also providing me a possibility to have, you know, time to enjoy it. And that was a really, really big step. And so I thank you for really being part of that catalyst that, you know, really shook me to get it done. Even though, you, you know, I didn't even know you. You were just, you were just someone who was at that point just calling. I get calls every day with someone trying to talk to me about their thing and. You know, there was something about you and your, you know, I think your ideology and your approach and what you were into that really caught my attention. So anyway, um, and now I, you know, fully appreciate it because, you know, to me, it's a it's a very essential part of my planning is to have not only your insights, but just, you know, the data that, you know, you can show me is super critical to really getting all those things accomplished. So yeah, I, to me, it really came down to that moment. And then I've been in the throes of building it while still doing the, you know, 13 houses. So it, it it's still been a lot like this year, even though I've somehow gotten better at balancing it, it's still been a lot. Like there's no, no doubt about it, but you know, the future, I think we both see how it can go and how, as it grows, um, that it will be better for that. So, so as, and I, I appreciate the kind of words. I, I look at it from my own experience. My, one of my mentors would always say, scale thyself. And scaling thyself is really hard because you're sometimes giving up the present in order to plant seeds for the future. And as an individual contributor that's just running and doing really, really well and outperforming, you have to learn that giving up some of that control is the long-term mechanism to being a much bigger entity that's providing the same level of service, if not better, because of your attention to detail. Kelly, like for you is, I guess, as somebody that's creating content, like how do you, I guess, what do you think about having other people write for you with your name on it or owning the photos or the fashion? Because like we all run into this, this moment where it's either scale thyself or drive yourself crazy because you're doing all of the work and it's it's often a control thing. I don't like that idea. <laughs> to be totally honest. <laughs> that doesn't sit well with me because I want it to be my voice and I want it to be, you know, my visuals uh, the way that I want them. Um, now that being said, I, I foresee that I will probably always always write my own material. But like, could I bring on somebody whose style I feel like really, you know, meshes with mine to like pick out clothing for me and, you know, so I could maybe back off a little bit on that. Sure. Yeah. Or could I bring on somebody to like make my food recipes and then like we just photograph them? Absolutely. I can see things like that happening. Um you know, and I hope that they do. And I do have a little bit of help right now, but not with content creation so far. It's just been me, but. I think if we fast forward to two years, we're going to have a video of Kel saying, I need some help with content creation. <laughs> well, I would be game for like somebody helping me come up with ideas, but I think in order to be authentic, and we hear this word so much um, in the social media you know, world about being authentic. And I feel like if I didn't write it myself, um, it just wouldn't, wouldn't be real. It's tough because the content creation is something that you're obviously incredibly passionate about. And I will, one little tip, like there are um, copywriters that will, their job is to own and learn your voice. And then you still can basically like you get to say yes or no or make any final edits, but instead okay. of you know 
you and Barkley and, and Ryan sitting on the couch and you're typing, you would have somebody actually doing that for you and you just have to basically sign off on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up live. There's this line that was said there that was was like I had to I have to go here. I had, I'd live in regret if I didn't ask this question. It was about writing their own material. Um, and you said, I, I need to write my own material. I need to write my own content. Um, Ryan, do you write your own content? Have you, have you always done real estate or, you know, you were a musician at one point, you may have done some comedy. Did you have a ghostwriter for your music and your comedy? No, but, you know, for, for real estate, I do have, I do have help. You know, I have Morgan and she works with me uh, and does a lot of that behind the scenes work. So I, I I certainly do have help. I don't do it all alone. And, but no, I mean, to your, to your question about the comedy, those jokes are 100% mine. <laughs> Can't you tell? Do you have any jokes that you'd be willing to share? Oh, no. I, I mean, not on the spot. I mean, I've already peppered you with like several throughout. They were just more, you know, you didn't get them, did you? I, I, Kelly's, Kelly's like, no, no more jokes. <laughs> so Kelly, um, Dress well, be well. He started the blog, and, and I was like, I was playing around on it. It's not necessarily my my style, um, uh, <laughs> but there there was one thing that was definitely my style, which was like this whole section on food and healthy eating. I got, and then I see your Instagram, and, and you have like really great photos of food that you're cooking. Where are you coming up with these recipes, and why was food such a big part of your your focus on wellness? Well, I started the paleo diet about four years ago. I cut out all like processed foods, um, gluten, dairy, sugar. So I eat like super clean all the time and I'm really, really strict about it. So I've had to get creative with how to make and find foods that I still love to eat that are exciting. Like I love pizza. I love tacos. So, you know, I've had to create ways that I can eat these in a healthy, clean way that don't cause inflammation for my body, you know, and help me heal. So over the years, I've kind of just, you know, messed around in the kitchen and come up with a whole bunch of things. And I've been inspired by a lot of people, too, you know, on Instagram, like, he won't know it's paleo is one of my favorites. Um, she does like a lot of recipes that, you know, your family would never know that they're like gluten and dairy free. So people like that have really inspired me. Transitioning to the thing that I, I don't necessarily know as much, which is like the style and fashion. And Ryan, I know that, that, that Kelly's had an influence on your style and fashion. I guess walk us through how, and that's like the primary thing from what I can see. You can tell me, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but like, how do you think about style and why is it such an important part of, of living in great I really love to express like a modern woman's style. Um, I do a lot of like dressy outfits, you know, for like going out on date nights or going out with your girlfriends or um, so just like really trendy modern brands and styles you'll definitely find on my Instagram and on my website. Um, and you're actually able to shop all of my looks um, directly on my blog and like all of my Instagram looks, you can just like click the link in my bio and it takes you right to shoppable links of every outfit that I post. Plus wow. then I'll also do like blog posts about like my favorite, I just did one the other day, like the best blazers for under $150. And I have like 20 different blazers that I've, you know, gone through and picked out. So they're like, you know, really trendy pieces that you can get for affordable prices too. Um, so I like to do a bunch of posts like that that can help people find things that they might not find on their own. So if I'm if I'm looking for you, where where can I find you? Where where am I going to go and, and learn about all this stuff? I can be found. My blog is dresswellbewell.com. My Instagram is at dresswellbewell. And my Facebook page is also Dress Well, Be Well. So I'm straight across the board, Dress Well, Be Well. <laughs> so Ryan, you're, you have a brokerage, you're building a team. Like, walk us through your vision here. What is it that you're looking to do with building a team? So the main goal is to take what I've really learned and what I can do really, really well on the consumer end basis and then 
build up other people to be able to have that same level of success and impact on people's lives and teach and empower them to go out and really achieve great things. And then also uh, essentially um, put in processes in place where they can achieve the work-life balance that I'm also trying to get. So it's, it's a really, everyone kind of works together to help each other to achieve those big goals of, you know, doing great things, but also having the time and the ability to enjoy it. So really, you know, out there meeting and interacting with like-minded people that have a similar, like high level passion for, for service and also for really just uh, doing the right thing. Cause it's a, it's an industry that, you know, there's a, a varying degree of people out there. So trying to find all the right people that really care and that, uh, that are willing to, you know, have some fun and work hard. I mean, that's what we do. So the, the long-term vision I think is just, um, repeating those elements that have brought joy to my life and to the, you know, my client base and to the other agents that I get to work with in a way that really is it kind of changing the way that real estate happens, um, and around here at least. So it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a cool thing to be involved in. If I'm joining a team or I'm joining a brokerage, like one of the things that I always, I would look at is like, who are my leaders and I guess what, how are they going to impact my life? So you as a leader, what are you committed to and what do you think are the most important things to, to help your team members with? The first thing that I definitely will be providing for everyone is a roadmap and a clear vision of where we're going. I think it's always critical to know where we are, where are we going and how are we going to get there? And I'll, I'll I need to make sure that everyone understands that. And that's a, a big core value of mine. You know, obviously as a, as a leader, I really try to embody the core values of honesty, integrity, uh, hard work. So are you actively recruiting now? And if I were to start on your team, what does that look like in the first 90 days? Yes. So, you know, I am looking for, for great people and it doesn't have to be someone that's in real estate already. So it depends. Your first 90 days would vary if you were already in real estate or if you're brand new to the world. So if you were brand new, then, you know, obviously we would go through the whole licensing uh, process and get you all set up. And then, of course, some very in-depth training programs to get you everything you need to learn to achieve uh, success in real estate at high levels, which is a lot to take on, which is why most realtors don't survive past two years on their own. Um, a high percentage of them don't. So I really try to look out for everyone that works with me to make sure that they have everything that they're going to need to stick with this as a lifelong career and be successful in it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, wish, wish you the best there. So, um, uh, the transition, you know, I've talked previous about like the, the energy that you two kind of share and create. And, um, I was reading the email last night and it is about like, building off of one another and really making one another stronger. So looking at your strengths and really, you know, pouring gasoline on that. Um, and then, and, and basically bringing people up through their, through positive energy. So, um, would love to hear your guys' kind of philosophy on that because it's beautiful, beautiful writing. Um, and, uh, it's something that's really powerful. Well, yeah. So for me, like, it totally makes sense what Kelly's doing because it honestly, it's, it's been a part of our relationship since we met. And, you know, it's, as an example, you know, when I met Kelly, I was a kind of a shaggy haired barista that was kind of putting on my, you know, minimum wage garments as like my badge of honor to the world. And, and I thought I was being courageous, but really I was uh, just kind of hiding, uh, to, so that I wouldn't have to try and fail. I was kind of putting out this projected image that, you know, don't expect too much out of me because you won't be disappointed, but, but, but you know, it is what it is sort of thing. And that was my level of, of bravery that I was willing to, to take on. And then, and then I met Cal and, you know, she didn't really tell me, you know, she, she didn't tell me she didn't like my style. She didn't tell me, Oh, that, you know, shirt is bad. You know, don't ever wear it again. She just, loved me for who I was. And then also I think she sparked some courage and bravery inside of myself. And then all of a sudden I started wanting to show the world a different picture. And then that led to 
that led to me kind of seeing myself in a whole new way. And, and then that kind of sparked more work and more vision. And then that sparked more confidence and all that really played back into how she sees me and then how I chose to show the world what they could expect out of me. And I think that, um, for, for me anyway, I mean, that's just part of who Kelly is. She draws that naturally out. She never was critical. She never made me feel like she didn't love me for who I was. It was always really warm and accepting. And then somehow it, it sparked this revolution of who I am. And, you know, people that knew me 10 years ago that would know me now would tell you that there's, there's dramatic changes and it's really all because of Kelly, but you know, not in a way that she was changing me, but just really ignited the changes within me that were really laying dormant because of lack of courage. And so, you know, to me, it's super exciting that she's now able to share this part of herself with the world and, you know, just pour into people and, and, you know, be there. And she really is a source of inspiration for me. How do I follow that up? <laughs> I mean, Ryan has given me so much support over the years. I mean, through the darkest, darkest times in my life, you know, he's, he's really kept me alive and well and here. And I mean, he's kept me going. He, he's, really changed the way that, you know, I think about myself and the way that I see other people too. Like he, he's helped me so much with my confidence. He's built me up from the bottom. <laughs> like I didn't believe in myself at all that I could do anything that I could get through all these like difficult illnesses or that I could even, you know, begin to create something of my own, um, you know, he's just really cheered me on the whole way. And I just wouldn't be able to do any of this without him. He supports, like, all of my crazy ideas. Like, I mean, who knows if, you know, <laughs> any of this is going to really, you know, be anything. But he he's all, always behind me no matter what. It's awesome. Really, really, really powerful. Uh, I want to thank the two of you. Uh, Kelly and Ryan Bibza for, for being on an Unsized Fits All podcast. Uh, listen to us every week. We have interesting stories like the one you just heard. Uh, it's, it's power couple. Watch out. Um, they're doing great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks so John. Much, John.